Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today we will look at 7 IFR acronyms that every pilot must know for IFR flights or for your instrument rating checkride. But before we get started though, kindly consider helping the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. The first acronym we're going to look at is MOCA, or Minimum Obstacle Clearance Altitude. This is the lowest published altitude between two VORs. Victor Airways or Off-Road Airways, etc. To clear obstacles and still receive VOR signal coverage, but only within 22 nautical mile. It is usually lower than MEA. We will look at what is the MEA in a second. On IFR chart, you can find MOCA depicted like this. MOCAs are usually prefixed with a star or asterisk. All right. Now let's look at our next one, MEA or Minimum Inroad Altitude is the lowest published airway altitude which will guarantee you the following first acceptable navigational signal coverage along the airway obstacle clearance of 1000 feet in non-mountainous area and 2000 feet in clearance in mountainous areas by the way the definition of mountainous terrain or mountainous area is an area of changing terrain profile where the change of terrain elevation exceeds 3,000 feet within a distance of 10 nautical mile. It also guarantees um, two-way communication reception with air traffic control. Although some people debate that at certain segments along the road, you might not receive communication uh, coverage. Also keep in mind that EMEA is usually higher than MOCA and MORA. On IFR chart, EMEA is depicted like this. All right, MORA is our next acronym minimum off-route altitude. First of all, please keep in mind that there are two types of minimum off-route altitudes. This root mora and grid mora. Moras give at least 1,000 feet altitude clearance above terrain and 2,000 feet in mountainous area. Root moras provide an obstacle clearance within 10 nautical mile on both sides of the airways and within 10 nautical mile radius around the end of the airways, usually around the VOR. Grid moras provide an obstacle clearance, however, within a latitude and longitude grid block, usually one degree by one degree. They are presented in feet, omitting the last two figures. Example, 7,600 feet is given as 7,6. Grid mora values clear all terrain and obstructions by 1,000 feet in area, where the highest elevations are 5,000 feet MSL or lower, and clear all terrain by 2,000 feet in areas where the highest elevations are above 5,000 feet MSL. Now let's discuss MORA and GRID MORA in a bit more detail. GRID MORA also might be referred to as AROCA. This type of altitude is considered an escape route. In commercial operations, it is highly desirable that the most direct route between two airports be flown whenever possible where that route involves the overflight of extensive areas of high terrain, such as the Himalaya, for example, it is critical that escape routes and procedures be developed and used in the event that an emergency requires that the aircraft must descend to an altitude that is below the minimum obstacle clearance altitude. So, Grid Mora looks like this. All right, next up, MSA, or Minimum Sector Altitude, or Minimum Safe Altitude. It is the lowest published altitude, which may be used that will provide a thousand feet clearance above all objects and obstructions, usually within 25 nautical mile radius from a nav aid. Mostly it's a VOR. MSA is always published in approach plates, SEDs, and STARS. Next we have MCA, or Minimum Crossing Altitude. An MCA is the lowest altitude at certain fixes at which the aircraft must cross when proceeding in the direction of a higher minimum inroad IFR altitude. Minimum crossing altitudes are shown using a flag with an X in the middle and the text MCA. The minimum crossing altitude is the minimum altitude at which you can cross a fix and usually associated with the change in the MEA at the fix. All right, next up. MAA, or Maximum Authorized Altitude. 
This one, there isn't much to it. It exactly uh, is what it means. An MEA is a published altitude representing the maximum usable altitude or flight level for an airspace structure or road segment. It is the highest altitude on an airway, jet route, RNAV low or high road, or other direct route for which an EMEA is designated. It is shown on IFR chart as highlighted in front of you right now. Next, we have MVA or minimum vectoring altitudes. MVAs are established for use by ETC when radar ETC is exercised. The MVA provides 1,000 feet of clearance above the highest obstacle in non-mountainous areas and again 2,000 feet above the highest obstacle in designated mountainous areas. Because of the ability to isolate specific obstacles, some MVAs may be lower than MEA or MOCAS or minimum altitude depicted on charts for a given location. While being radar vectored, IFR altitudes assignments by ATC are normally at or above MVA. Sometimes you may notice that radar advises you to descend below MEA or minimum in route altitude. That's fine as long as they have you on their uh, radar screen and you are maintaining a two way radio communication. Keep in mind that dropping below the MVA or minimum vector altitude, you might drop from the ATC's radar as well. Last one. RNAV minimum in route altitude. RNAV MEAs are depicted on some IFR in route low altitude charts, allowing both RNAV and non RNAV uh, pilots to use the same chart for instrument navigation. And this is how it looks like on uh, an IFR chart. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the video of uh, seven IFR acronyms that every pilot must know. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to answer each and every one of you guys. Thank you for watching and until the next time, see ya.